Hey y'all, this is Tyler Blake with TylerBlakeArt.com again, and this is episode 21 of Beyond the 100 Days of Making Comics. So, uh, I am doing my, using my watercolor Artesia Real Brush Pens again on this. Um, some of the background that I, that I uh, did on this, I used, uh, just like tradition, not traditional as in two watercolor, but, uh, the little... Um, you know, little watercolor cakes. Most of my, like the vast majority of my art supplies are still in storage from moving, and so I have my water brushes, but I don't have my regular paint brushes. And I, I recently had started to order some good quality watercolor tubes of, from M. Graham, and I, I'm slowly building up my collection. I'm going to keep a really limited palette, like seven colors. Um, I'm, I'm taking some advice from the uh, svslearn.com podcast with uh, Will Terry and Jake Parker and Lee White. And um, anyways, so, I, and I, I have some good watercolor paper, so I, I want to try doing some more traditional watercolor with, uh, you know, like line and wash. So I'd, I'd still be drawing and inking and then going over it with the, the good watercolors, but I'm I'm curious to see how uh how the process would differ with that compared to using the Artezas. And I, I like the Artezas. I find the Artezas very forgiving because I can lay my value down and then just go and blend it to my heart's content. And if if there's something I don't like, a couple days later I can always just go back with water and, and lift some paint off or you know, if I went outside the line a little bit I I can blend that into where you won't notice. So, um Nothing against the Artezas. I'm just now that I've started to become more interested in watercolor, I want to kind of explore the medium. And uh, the the other thing I'm interested in too is doing my gray values in watercolor and then just going over it with marker because that I could see that being like a really fast. And I would, I would probably still do a lot of the background stuff in watercolor because with with the markers, I find that. You know, if you're trying to do, like, a sky, you're always going to have, like, all these little stroke marks. And, like, when I was using Copics all the time, I never really got satisfied. And then the other thing, too, is that when you scan, you know, your original is always going to look different from the digital representation of it. And so sometimes stuff that would be naked, or things that would be invisible to the naked eye with the markers would show up on a scan, like, you know, I spent some extra time working this area, and when you scan it, like, it, it just looked different, and, and it made things look blotchy when you were going for a smooth look. So that, that's another thing about the traditional watercolors, because, like, the, the wash effects that you can get with traditional watercolors are, you know, you, you can't really beat that for, for skies and some things like that. So, uh, anyway, um, we have... This is the cover for Killing Them Softly, and this this part, this uh, sword fight, takes place directly before the first page. So it, it's it's a lead-in. I'm really pretty happy with it. Um, I I like doing action scenes and fights. Um, the uh, I guess the goal with this is that. It'll be dynamic and entertaining for people who have never studied any martial arts. And for people who have studied some martial arts, they might go, Oh, I know what he's doing there, because my brother and I were really into that. And um, he, he just let me do what I want with the cover, but uh, I was like, Oh, yeah, I'm going to have him be thiefing in the snake and doing a foot trap, and yeah. So, anyways... Um, I am quickly coming up on the end here. There's going to be a finished shot of the cover here in just a minute. And uh, I, I still have the titles and the logo to finish up. So this is right around the corner, though. So I thank you for watching this. And until, I'm keep on, until next time, keep on reading comics, making comics, and buying comics.